Hello YouTube. I have recently been upgrading my 3D printer a little bit, especially the guts, and I uh, thought I should show off on YouTube to maybe inspire some of you guys to do the same thing. Uh, what I did is uh, change the motherboard from the stock one to the uh, SKR 1.4 turbo, and I also included a Raspberry Pi for running Octoprint, and everything is neatly inside the main casing because we have a lot of space in this thing so we might as well use it and then I think it looks you know I'm really happy with the result it looks very clean I um, you can't really see anything weird about it now except that there is the uh, camera coming out of the normal USB hole uh, it's quite a shitty webcam but it's it still needs a mount but it's all working and on this side you might see some weird stuff going on Normally, of course, this would be our USB uh, for file, uh, USB port for files to uh, send files to the printer with the screen. But actually, this is now a USB port that runs to the Octoprint uh, server. And this is the Wi-Fi module that uh, allows my Raspberry Pi to connect to the internet. Because, of course, if you put a Wi-Fi module inside a metal case, the reception is going to be pretty shitty. And this is still the regular SD card. And here on the side, you might see some some funny stuff. So, actually, might as well turn this on. There we go. So this is a, a status LED for my Raspberry Pi. If the light comes up, that means my Raspberry Pi is running. And with this button, I can actually shut it down. And uh, you can install a add-on for Octopi that's called GPIO Shutdown. And well, basically what it does is exactly what I just told you. It allows you to uh, safely shut down the Raspberry Pi with a button such that it doesn't uh, corrupt any files on it, which could happen if you just turn off the power. Yeah, there the LED comes on. So you know it's on, and now if I wanted to uh, shut down my my 3D printer, I can just press this button, and then light goes off. So I know the Raspberry Pi is shut down. I'll give it a few more seconds to really know it's turned off, and then I can kill the power off the back of the machine, and we can uh, take a look on the inside. So I'll show you guys what I did there just a second some extra light there and focus all right so here you can see the guts uh, as I uh, said before I have an upgraded mainboard the SKR 1.4 turbo and the Raspberry Pi up here and I mounted everything on a uh, custom 3d printed subframe and I have a link to this in the description of the video um, and the motherboard and it, yeah, the frame is mounted with the same interface as, as uh, the stock motherboard, but it has an interface for the new motherboard that's 90 degrees uh, changed from the original position, and it houses the Raspberry Pi uh, in such a position that it doesn't collide with the the stock fan unit because the fan will be roughly here. And uh, yeah, you, you want to have the USB ports and the GPIO pins away from the fan, such that they don't collide. So this, for me, this seemed to be the best position to put the Raspberry Pi. Um, and yeah, the motherboard is now 90 degrees rotated because with the SKR 1.4 Turbo, this SD card uh, would collide with the housing here on the bottom. 
so you need to twist turn it anyway or at least move it up so I thought hey you just twist it 90 degrees get it out of the way there and uh, actually that routes all the cables pretty nicely um, and it frees up this hole for my webcam so I can use the USB port for the to guide the webcam cable out turned out pretty neat and uh, yeah so let me talk a little bit about how I wired this of course one of the main reasons to twist this board 90 degrees is to have the USB A port inside the casing so that this uh, serial connection with the Raspberry Pi is uh, easily made inside the casing and we can send uh, serial commands to the main board and the power supply of the Raspberry Pi is also coming from the main board with a 5 volt uh, header pin connection of the Raspberry Pi with this custom cable going to the new pixel interface and uh, in order to supply sufficient current I also installed a DC DC converter module you can get these for a few bucks uh, onto the SKR 1.4 turbo and you see here this little red jumper you need to put it to the uh, to the right in order to uh, align with this board what a position is here and uh, what that does is basically so select the 5 volt supply for the new pixels to come from the DCDC converter instead of the internal 5 volt regulator of the board which is too weak to provide sufficient current for the Raspberry Pi so what else we got here of course we have this USB that goes to webcam that goes outside here and we have the USB extension cable which uh, I basically hot glued into where normally the USB connector for the uh, disk controller goes to and mine was already broken so I just desoldered it and hot glued this extension cable uh, and it was broken because the yeah because the plastic is not really great quality uh, and that, that's where now the Wi-Fi antenna goes uh, what else we got here we have this uh, uh, cable that goes to my LED and button so difficult to see but it's yeah it's it's basically I can't really show that it's fairly simple you have three wires you have a ground and then two GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi and uh, that the ground goes to both the button and the LED and one GPIO is wired as an output which can light up the LED and the other is an input which can detect button presses something else that is more interesting is how I wired up the filament runout sensor because normally it goes to uh, this controller board which can send uh, yeah, print commands via the serial cable to the main board uh, from files that you um, yeah, load up from here and this, this cable uh, connects to the runout sensor and it sends a 5 volt signal on this uh, no sorry 3.3 volt signal on this one a ground signal on the middle one and the actual uh, status of the switch comes back with this cable and I also wanted to have this sensor on my Raspberry Pi so I uh, what I did is actually cut this cable in half right here and I just wired up a new uh, a GPIO pin to the same cable so now I have the signal on both the Raspberry Pi and the original controller so I can use it on both and that's only possible because yeah, both of these boards run on 3.3 volt and uh, the headers of the Raspberry Pi are also 3.3 volt and the uh, yeah power supply is the same for both ports they're both powered by the power that's coming from the main board so they share a common ground they can thereby use the same signal so yeah that's basically it um, last thing I might talk about is this yeah this uh, PCB standoff that I added to the Raspberry Pi just to give it some more rigidity against flexing but it's it's not really needed because this frame is actually pretty stiff it doesn't move much 
So this will be upside down, of course. And uh, yeah, this might sag a little bit, to be honest. Yeah, this is just a safety feature. So yeah, that's it. I hope you like this video and uh, I hope I can uh, yeah, share some ideas to other people about how to build this setup. Have a good day.